I want to say, this music is not my music, so I don't be copyright infringement. I have a young man here that, first of all, I recognize him from his military hat, okay? And he said he was from the Vietnam era, the war. I want him to tell you a story, starting back, and we're gonna go back, when he was at Brentwood School. Well, I'm gonna start off by telling you that my name is Dana Gutierrez. Um, my parents are from Puerto Rico. Um, when my mother came to this country at 19 years old, um, in those days, in the 1920s, in Puerto Rico was an agricultural society. So my mother came here, she didn't even go to school in Puerto Rico, so although she could speak Spanish, her written and writing language skills were not there. She comes to, this, to the mainland, meets my father, they get married, and they have me. My first language was Spanish, I didn't learn English till I went to school, with a first name like Dana. And one of the things that I would like to state to everybody, it's, I need them to reflect on what it's like to grow up in Brooklyn with a name like Dana and a last name that most people can't pronounce and the fact that I did not speak English at the time. So, to say the least, things were very, very difficult. I wasn't a very good student. Um, going to school wasn't pleasurable when I was being bullied and the teachers were not sensitive to my last name or to my language. Um, at that particular junction, when I was in the middle school, I found it best that I associate with street guys, gangbangers, because they gave me the respect and the courtesy that I always wanted, especially when they would see me defend myself from people who were abusing me. Um, things weren't going very well in Brooklyn, and my father made a decision that he was gonna take his son out of the city and transplant him into a place called Brentwood, Long Island. So at 15 years old, I moved to Brentwood, Long Island. The best thing that ever happened to me, because one of the things that I noticed when I moved to Brentwood, Long Island, I started to attend the Brentwood School, is that the teachers were passionate, they were sensitive, they were sensitive to my culture, they were sensitive to my needs, and they really taught me a great deal. They embraced me. They brought me into an environment that they welcomed me. They welcomed my background, they welcomed my attributes, they welcomed everything that I was able to accomplish. Upon graduating from high school, I was drafted into the military. And 13 months in Vietnam. When I came home, I was in bad shape. I wasn't feeling very well. Psychologically, mentally, physically. Um, I suffered uh, from Agent Orange. I suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, etc., etc. While at the VA hospital in Northport, my brother comes to visit me and states, what's your plan? What do you plan on doing? I had no idea. I was a good soldier, got a lot of medals for what I did, but I had no idea as to what my future would be like or what my planning would be like. He finally turns around and says, why don't you become a school teacher? They're off all summer and they don't do shit anyway. I said, hey, that sounds pretty good to me. Until I went to college. When I enrolled in college, the only thing that I had to show these admissions officers was my DD214, DD which is the military discharge papers, and my high school diploma, or I should say, my high school transcript. My high school transcript was 65, 60, 70, 72. I wasn't a good student. When I sat down with this admissions officer, he sits down, he looks at the two paperwork, the two pieces of paper that I provided for him, and he looks at me and he says to me, there's not much that I can do with these pieces of paper. However, if you're interested in coming back to this institution, why don't you come and go to Suffolk Community College and, and you can really do something with yourself after two or three years at Suffolk Community College. When he said that to me, especially because he couldn't pronounce my last name, I was very angry, I was hostile, I was very, very, very agitated. I wanted to hurt him physically because it's the only thing I knew. But through the grace of God, and I have a lot of faith in God, through the grace of God, the little monkey, as I call it, was on my shoulders and he looks at me and he goes, don't do that, Dana, because if you do that, you're gonna go to jail. So it inspired me to say something to him. And what I told him was that, excuse me, how dare you talk to me like that? I'm a disabled American veteran. I serve my country proudly. I am going to let every association that deals with veterans let them know about you and this learned institution. Which is interesting because with that being said, the way I presented myself, and again, maybe it's because of the grace of God, 
he looked at me, turned around and said he apologized for his behavior and his language. He informed me that he had a rough day and he didn't mean to take it out on me. Then he turns around and he says, you know what, I can't help you with what you have here, but let me give you the business card of a gentleman who might be able to help you. He gives me the business card of a Mr. Bucknell. This gentleman was the director of human services for the entire Long Island University. I wasn't interested in a position, I was interested in going to school. He says, I can't help you, however, why don't you make an appointment with this man and he'll be able to assist you and help you. With that, he gives me the business card, then he says, you know what, wait a minute, let me see if he's in his office. Goes back into another office, comes back and says, Mr. Bucknell is waiting for you. I was like dumbfounded. Here's a gentleman that was very, very busy with everything in his life and everything that he was responsible for. He took the time to take a look at my paperwork and to look at me and ask me, would you like to talk about your experiences in Vietnam? That was difficult for me to do because even when I was in the VA hospital and we, which was a small unit of Vietnam veterans in Northport, it was difficult to talk about your experiences in Vietnam. So with that being said, I looked at him and I went, nah, I don't want to talk about that. He says, you know what, Mr. Bucknell is waiting for you, why don't you go over and see him? So I sit down with him, he looks at me and he says to me, what do you want? I said, I want anything from anybody. All I want is a chance, an opportunity. With that being said, he gave me an opportunity to enroll in Long Island University, CW Post College, with 12 credits. Then he says to me, if anybody questions anything, give them my business card and let them know that they should contact me. With that being said, I started to take those courses and I fear taking those courses feared them even more than my experiences in Vietnam because remember what I said, I wasn't a good student. I hardly went to school. School wasn't, a, wasn't something that I was interested in because of the way I was received, the way I was perceived. I started to look at these courses, and, but in my mind I said to myself, Dana, if you can make it through Vietnam, you can do anything you put your mind to. And I started to make the sacrifices necessary so that I can obtain a bachelor's degree in education at which time I started to do my internship in the school that gave me the opportunity to excel and to succeed, the Brentwood School District. I started to work at South Junior High School over in the Brentwood Schools as a foreign language instructor. From then, I went on to become a guidance counselor. Afterwards, I coordinated the alcohol and drug abuse prevention program for the Brentwood School District. Then I became the assistant principal at South junior high school, the same school that I started my career in, and I retired as the, principal, as the principal of South Junior High School. So it was an extended career, it was great, I thank God for the opportunity, and as I tell all my young students, regardless of where they come from, if I can make it, you can make it. Put your mind to it, yes. succeed, because yes. you can make it. You can make it. I'm the example. Yes. I did it. God yes. bless you. Thank you for this opportunity, and the Lord keep you safe and sound. Yes. Bye. I want to ask you one question. How did you know Carmen? I know Carmen from the gym. Okay. Because Carmen bounces around, punches around, and he's always doing something that's mind-boggling. But for a guy like me, I can't keep up with him. So can't keep up with no, him. No, huh? I'm 72. <laughs> yeah, I can't keep yeah. up with him. We're going to send that to uh, Carmen. Uh, Carmen, uh, ever since I've been in here, she always show love when I come in. She's a military uh, lady, and she told me about that week of training that she had to go with no food, a little amount of food, with uh, no bathroom, whatever. She is a beautiful lady. Now tell me what brung you to Crunch Gym Fitness over here in High Park, New York. I was a member of, of LA Fitness for many, many years. And um, since the pandemic, I was looking for an environment that was clean, I was looking for an environment that was new, that the H uh, HVAC systems were, were, were gonna be able to keep me in a safe environment, working out without having to use a mask. Crunch Fitness here gave me all of the things that I was looking for, especially during the pandemic, which of course everybody knows, yes. these facilities were closed. Yes. So to come in here and to see a clean facility and most importantly for me is the love and the feelings that I get from everybody who's employed here at Crunch. 
especially my friend Carmen. Thank you. WWWOT on time. God bless Live you. Bye. Otis Lee, Red Table Cloud. Bye, Otis. All right, thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Otis. You're quite welcome, baby. God All bless right. you. God bless you, too. This is um, my new friend here. Was Carmen friend, still is Carmen friend. And I want to send a shout out to Anthony too. I think Anthony is a great kid also too. But this story here, this story, military to teaching and going to college. And now down here at Crush Young. Thank you, sir.